This is Kevin Fletcher for Juniper SLVPN and VMware VDI. We'll take a look here first by logging into the View Admin Console. So this is what it looks like. Again, this is VMware View 4. This is the build number. For those of you who aren't familiar, I'll just kind of walk you through it real quick. Uh, let's start with configuration. We'll look at the system licensing. Here's some statistics as well. And then there's different components for the view infrastructure. There's the virtual center server, which we connect to for all our VMs. So we'll take a look at this here first. Basically, you see some settings here to connect to my virtual center server. This is managing my ESX infrastructure. So, And we don't need a security server. This is kind of like a proxy, SSL proxy. And of course, the Pulse VPN can handle that. Now we'll take a look here at the view servers. Uh, can have some external URLs. Does support direct connection. We're using broker mode. Uh, SSL is not necessary for this because again, we're using Pulse as the SSL VPN transport. It also supports some two-factor options here and you can set up the backups and things like that. So next we'll take a look at the users here. Basically these can dynamically be imported from Active Directory. Uh, you just kind of search for them. The events basically just showing some of the items that uh, different tasks and things like that that happen with uh, the virtual center. So, uh, we'll take a look here at the pools now. This is really where everything happens. Um, basically this is where we're provisioning all the VMs for the users. I'm using a automated desktop pool. You can see here what that is. Basically I'm using a uh, VM which I made into a template as the template for all the new VMs. And they are non-persistent. That way they're basically discarded and destroyed when I'm done so I don't really care about what the disk contents are. Everybody has their own needs and different settings. Uh, this is just a name. Uh, basically you'll see, it, you'll see it later. Here's some of the pool settings. Uh, the pool is obviously enabled and you'll see some of the options here for what to do with the VM when it's not in use. Um, however, we're just going to immediately log them off and delete them, so delete the virtual machine. So basically we don't really care uh, what, what's going to happen afterwards. We are using PC over IP as the default, but uh, RDP is of course still supported. Um, it does support multiple monitors and you'll see here we've got some new throttling settings. This is new in VMware View 4. Um, some throttling for flash and things like that. Um, you'll see here the naming pattern. Y you'll see where the bracket N comes into play later. It basically is a dynamic uh, number. And then we have a few number of reserved VMs that we will pre-power on uh, for the users. Uh, and this is where we select the template that we're going to be using. Basically it's an XP that we just converted into a template on the location of where the pool resides in the VM store and which servers will manage this and which servers the VMs should then be run on, running on. Um, this is where the VMs will keep all of their data on our SAN. Um, we do support customization. We, I tried to set it up. It looks like it's a little tricky. Uh, you have to use some resource files and some scripting. Uh, I thought I had it set up but I got some errors so I, I've just turned it off for now. Um, so that's basically it and uh, now once you have the pool set up you do need to set up entitlements for the pool so this is where you go and you link in all of those users that we can pull in from Active Directory. I'm, I'm just pulling in some groups here to make it easier for users to log in. So that's essentially it. Uh, once you set this up it will provision and build a couple of uh, you know desktop sources. These are, these are what we pre-provision. Not every scenario is going to use pre-provision. You may already have servers online, but uh, you'll see here it's powered the one on and it's got the second one already in the works. So now let's take a look at the secure access SSL VPN side. This is the user interface. You'll see here we have an option for virtual desktops. Um, this isn't really new in 7.0, but we are using 7.0 here and just showing off this functionality. You can refresh the, the desktops and things like that. Uh, let's just go ahead and launch it. Now, this does not require a separate Pulse VPN, but you could run it over Pulse as well. Um, so there's kind of a few options here. 
Um, this is because I'm obviously no expert in setting up my VMs and my view infrastructure, but uh, I think you guys get the point. You'll see here we've got a full desktop delivered and provisioned on the fly for this user. Some different options here, USB and switching and things like that. Again, this is uh, view for, this is the 401 client, I guess. But you see this is just kind of a full desktop here. And uh, I had to shrink it down because my monitor, but you'll see you have access to everything here. So. Okay, so let's take a look here. You'll see now the user is connected. So we logged in and connected. So he's got an active session, and you can kind of do some different things here remove them, reset them, whatever. You can also look at a few other places here, active sessions. Again, you can kind of go in here and reset or log off or disconnect the user. Uh, but basically, you're just kind of seeing all your sessions here. And this is kind of like a high level, you know, number of total sessions right there, one active. So we leave it on desktop sources usually, and I'll refresh that here as I'm logging out. Yeah, it takes a little bit to uh, get going here, but if you sit there and refresh it cr like crazy, you'll see all the different phases it goes through. Um, but let's take a look here at the admin console. This is version 7.0 R1. You don't need that for this functionality, but of course, you know, this was just launched, so this is what's new. Um, we'll take a look here at the role options. You'll see we have enabled VDI for this role. And pretty much everything's done through resource profiles. So you come in here and this actually is just a link to the resource profiles VDI right here. So when you click on this it takes you to the bookmarks page first and you know just by looking at the breadcrumbs here at the top. Um, this is SSO for the user itself uh, and some of the options that you can set up for this user kind of by the default settings. Now if you click on just resource profiles and you go into the profile itself, um, you can look at some of the settings here, basically just the host name and uh, the information to grab the information from port 80 and uh, build the list of you know, the virtual desktops. It's like an XML service that they offer. So that's pretty much it here. Um, yeah, if we refresh this, you'll see it's already deleted the last one and it's going ahead and provisioning a new one now and so I, I set it up this way so it just always keeps a couple running you can go through the logs and kind of figure it all out but it's uh, it's actually pretty automated it's a pretty neat setup so pretty much wraps it up again this is a VMware view 4.0 uh, with PC over IP support so I hope you enjoyed the demo for more information please visit www.juniper.net